Hey, Chicago, what do you say? It's the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by PointsBet. Use the promo code CHGO when you sign up to get two risk-free bets up to 2000 bucks. Welcome to Friday's podcast. And the Cubs are still undefeated and kings of Major League Baseball. The Cubs and Brewers rained out at Wrigley Field on Friday, so that game will now be made up coming all the way in at the end of May. Cody Del Mendo's here. Ryan Herrera's here. I'm Luke Stuckmeyer. Uh, plus, so the game is going to be made up as a split doubleheader now coming May 30th against the Brewers at Wrigley Field. And re- correct me if I'm wrong here, Ryan, they're just pushing the starters back. So we'll get Steele on Saturday, Stroman on Sunday, correct? Yeah, so uh, all it is, yes, yeah, Steele on Saturday. Um, but yeah, they're not trying to, oh, we got to keep these in a certain order. No, it's a steal, steal tomorrow. Strowman Sunday is what Ross told us. Um, he doesn't know about, you know, Smiley was supposed to go, I think, on Sunday. Um, Ross kind of isn't at the Pirates. Game. He doesn't know if uh, Smiley will pitch that first game in the Pirates series because that's, you know, on Tuesday. Um, but for at least for tomorrow, it's just Steele and Strowman just getting pushed back a day. So I think it's kind of interesting to look at Steele and, and what, you know, you talk to him at spring training. I think a lot of people are excited. He has one more day of anticipation now as, you know, he kind of amps up for, you know, what I, I'm sure he considers the biggest start of his career. You know, it's it's close to opening day. He's on the opening day roster and, um, you know, he had a good spring and he's a different. People are wondering, why is he starting ahead of Stroman? I think we all agree that the answer is likely because of the way he pitches. You know, he's he's not the finesse type of guy that Hendricks and Stroman. So it's a little a change of pace, I guess, uh, between two starting pitchers. Would you agree that's the reason he's in at number two instead of Stroman going in the second game? Yeah, well, first I want to f- shout out Phil. Phil said he's listening mm-hmm. live from Copenhagen, Denmark. So that's – Wow. We're gonna, okay, that's pretty Denmark, all over the world, right? international. Phil, yeah. International. Welcome, welcome in, Phil. Um but yeah, and I think it also has to do with, like kind of I said yesterday, you don't know how built up steel is right now. Stop it, CHGO Sports. Uh, you don't know how uh, built up steel is now compared, Great to, like, Kyle, compared to Kyle or, uh, or Stroman. Um, and so it was also kind of, yeah, splitting them up, making sure the bullpen, like say you say you put Stro- Hendricks and Stroman together, they go deep, the bullpen doesn't get worked that much, or, or they do. And then you have Steele and Smiley, who may, might be a little less uh, built up. And then you're you're using that bullpen a lot more it's back-to-back days, whereas um, as, you know, if Steele pitches today, you're able to split that up between Kyle, Steele, maybe use the bullpen a little more, and then Stroman tomorrow. Uh, obviously, that's you're getting another day of rest now with Steele with the or with the, with the rain out. Uh, but you're getting, ex- giving those bullpen guys extra rest, but I think that's just just really nothing to it besides kind of splitting up. Hendricks and Stroman. You like that, Cody? Yeah, you know, uh, when we kind of talked about it when it f- was first announced, uh, you know, I've clearly been high on Justin Steele. I know, you know, when we first launched, we when we talked about him, we were kind of, is he going to make the rotation? Is he's even close? And as I've always thought ever since the end of last year, I was like, he's going to get a shot. He deserve, He's deserving of one. Didn't think he was going to start the second game of the year, <laughs> but – um, yeah, no, I like the idea of it. Uh, you know, not only is he just a different type of pitcher, but also, a, you know, a power lefty, uh, you know, Hendricks and, and Stroman, both righties. So, you you know, lefty righty matchup also with the, you know, the, you know, the difference in type of pitcher they are. Um, so, yeah, it's ex- I'm, I'm excited uh, to see him tomorrow. I'm going to be in left field with a few buddies uh, watching his start and hope and pray that it's a good one because I know that he, uh, you know, He's worked really hard to even get this opportunity. Uh, you know, you could tell whenever Ryan talked to him when he was out in spring training. Um, and, you know, he's been in the Cubs system for a while. We always talk about Contreras and how he was in the Cubs system for a really long time. Uh, I mean, he was drafted by Theo back in like 2014, I want to say. And he, so he's been in the system for a long time. And for him to make it all the way to this opportunity, it's a it's really exciting stuff. Um, so I, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that he goes out there and at least gives the Cubs four solid innings. It's, it'll be interesting to see how many pitches they let him throw just because like we've talked about with the whole, you know, this fast spring training ramp up and everything, uh, you know, ideally you hope that he has good command and he's able to give you 
three or four clean innings and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But I, you know, like I said, I'm excited to see how it plays out. I see uh go Vols 14 is asking, what do you think of subbing VR for Horner instead of wisdom <laughs> today? We'll get to that in just a bit, but you know, I think the cool thing about steel is uh, I'm glad this game was rained out because I didn't want to see him go to the mound for one inning and then, you know, have to go sit down and, and, cool off and that can throw off any pitcher let alone a guy that's making a really important start in his career so i'm glad that he's he, he's getting a fresh start it's still going to be cold on saturday you know so he gets that advantage yeah. of hitters being uncomfortable in the box a pitcher doesn't seem to mind it nearly as much but he, he according to the forecast he's not going to have to worry about going up sitting for 30 minutes having to rewarm up and hopefully uh, it works in his favor because I want him to have every advantage possible going into this first start of the season. So I, I think the rain out worked in his favor, despite the fact that he's got to wait another, maybe it's two sleepless nights now as he gets ready to make that start. And uh, hopefully he's able to just relax today and, and, you know, have a little fun and then, and then take it into Saturday and have a great game and put the Cubs up 2-0 in the series, which, you know, the goal now is you win one, you might as well sweep them. You might as well go yeah. for it, right? Like, <laughs> What the heck? You're, you're playing with house money because we weren't uh, necessarily sure how first game would work out against Burns, and now you've got a chance against another great pitcher. Um, on the flip side, you get Stroman on Sunday, who, Cody, you thought you were going to see at Wrigley Field when you went on yeah. Saturday. Now he goes to Sunday, and the weather's supposed to be perfect on Sunday, like 60 degrees, high 50, 60, on, and sunny at Wrigley Field. And I think with the sunshine – and his start on Sunday, the last game of the series, I think he will get the full Wrigley experience. You know, he was he's been really active on Twitter and all those things, kind of talking about oh, this is amazing. The fans were amazing on opening day. I think he's going to get a full dose of it with the sunshine and uh, what everything that comes with a great game at Wrigley Field. So I think it's a good thing for Stroman too. Cody, did Ron uh, does Ron have Sunday tickets too, or? <laughs> I, I texted him right after I learned that it was postponed, <laughs> and he was like, Strowman's got to start tomorrow somehow, or I'm shit out of luck. He straight <laughs> up told me that. So he's not going to the game Sunday, which sucks. Oh. I feel bad for him. He is he's the one of the biggest Marcus Strowman fans I know out there, so it sucks for him. But yeah, you know, you you know, know. Else I do I do feel kind of bad. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I do kind You're of feel good. bad for you know walking out of Wrigley today. They, you know, they announced the the rain out like 90 minutes before our first pitch, and you see there's people all over Wrigley already. Yeah, see some yeah. disappointed looks on the kids' faces. I'm like, it's yeah. nice that I get to be home at 1:30 p.m. on the Friday, but I'm like, I do kind of feel bad for the people that were ready for for a Cubs game today. That's like one of the biggest like things that teams just haven't been able to figure out how to like do properly. I feel like, but also mm -hmm. like, yep. I, I think I tweeted this earlier. That like I felt like the Cubs let this thing go as long as they did because a few years ago I want to say it was like either 2018 or 2019 the Brewers got like they they got super salty about the fact that the Cubs like postponed <laughs> yeah. a game whenever there never ended up being any bad weather uh, even though there was bad weather in the forecast and so I I it was like ten foil hat like you know maybe that that's why they let this go as far as they did just because they didn't want Milwaukee to get all salty again about it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. That, that's just, you know, uh, I mean, it's uh, a no win situation. It was, it, was yeah, pretty exactly. it, it just is like everybody wants to complain no. because if they let it go too long, the, the argument is, oh, they're just trying to sell us beer. They're expensive beer and they're expensive food. And the flip side is if they don't do it, people are like, why, you know, why did you make me go out there, sit in miserable weather and the game never happened? So it's like, I, I don't know. Especially, I, I definitely feel bad for people who like, came from not chicago you know That's there's the people who made the trip yeah. that yeah. didn't that aren't from the city but uh you know you you think though that some of those people probably have tickets for tomorrow's game or something yeah. or the weekend whatever you're you, you'd think if they came all the way for friday at 120 you'd think that they came but you know i that those are those are the people i feel bad for the most yeah the random late spring breaker who decided to make wrigley field <laughs> In, in April, <laughs> their choice. But uh, my my uh, word of advice to them the next time around would be don't come to Chicago in April, no matter if yeah. the Cubs are at home or not. Just wait, just wait and come to the experience in June or mm -hmm. July. You'll enjoy it a lot more. And I will say yeah. this, you know, 
when when we were looking, we were trying to decide this morning. We're like, is this is this game going to happen? Is it not going to happen? For me personally, the thing that jumped into my mind is, you know, they were ready to forfeit the first month of the season of games because of weather and how much money they make anyway. So don't don't keep this dragged on until three o'clock in the afternoon and then be like, well, we sold some beer and we made a little money. Like, I'd rather err on this side of caution. It's it's going to be probably better on the thirtieth. I also would have been okay with Sunday being the double header right out of the gate. Like it's it's early and that's tough on the pitching staff, but if you know it's going to be nice and there's almost like no chance of rain on Sunday, I would have been cool with playing that double header right out of the gate on Sunday, but clearly the teams decided to choose that one at uh, the end of May instead. I, I did not want a double header uh, in general. <laughs> uh, but I, would, I would rather have the double header. I honestly, May 30th is Memorial day. So that should be a great yeah. day for baseball. So, I mean, if you're gonna do a double header, might as well have it on Memorial Day, right? Yeah. Oh, I mean, if you think they're gonna sell beer today, beer and food today versus beer and food on Memorial Day weekend, I mean, yeah. come on, that's not even gonna be close. <laughs> I mean, the yeah. park's gonna be packed on Memorial Day, rain or not. Like if it's even cloudy, right. it, people are still gonna pack. And frankly, ha, do you guys even remember a nice Memorial Day in Chicago? Like that happens like once every 50 years. It's like the lunar eclipse or something like that. Like <laughs> Memorial Day usually is pretty rotten around here. So, but it'll be, I, I'm confident it will be better than today. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I mean, it wasn't, the funny thing was you guys are talking about like the, the, the Brewers game that got rained out a couple yeah. of years ago. Um, as soon as we kind of left the clubhouse, we went back upstairs and you know, we were walking next to the, or walking next to like the, you know, walking up to the, to the press box, you could see on the field, there's like, it's, it's sunny. <laughs> it was sunny. I'm like, <laughs> oh man, the Brewers are going to hate this. Um, yeah. but I mean, it eventually started raining on my drive home. I, I saw the rain was, was moving out to the city. So it was, it was uh, it's good. taking its time though. It still ain't here. <laughs> no, it, it'll yeah. be there. It'll be there. Trust me. I think it was but saying like two o'clock. Just... It was raining snow. So. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's it's miserable in most of the area. It might not be at Wrigley Field, but I mean, bless the people that were willing to sit out in this weather and and wait for this game to start. I do feel bad for the people that actually made it to the ballpark. But yeah. uh, let's talk about the lineup because that was the question on the chat. You know, there's the lineup that was supposed to happen, and now we're not sure if this will be the same lineup. Ryan, you tweeted it out uh, from the clubhouse. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they march out the same lineup tomorrow against Woodruff. Uh, Clint Frazier getting his first start for the Cubs after a nice at bat in the opener at DH. Madrigal playing, Contreras playing, half back and left. There's there's the position that I think most people are chatting about today uh, after the rain out and before the rain out. Jonathan VR at shortstop instead of Nico Horner, who had this terrific opening day game and hit the big home run. And I think people are questioning. Well, why wouldn't Nico get to play again after he had and try and build off of that uh, instead of VR at short? And then the other change is Rivas at first, which I know a lot of people have been looking forward to seeing. Um, and, you know, the other argument there would be some people are saying, well, couldn't you move some other guys around and take Hayward out of the game? Well, then that impacts <laughs> Frazier and Hap. So, I get that. To me, the, the biggest uh, question mark, if you want to nitpick David Ross's uh, lineup for this game, would have been VR over Nico Horner. I don't have a huge problem with it. I guess you could have played Horner at second no, well, instead, so, instead of Madrigal, the, but that's unlikely too. Well, here's the – what he told us is – Okay. Um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not Nico, like, not feeling good or anything. That's just that. And Ross said it, it kind of went against his gut to sit someone who just homered the day before. Um, but that he's like right now, especially out of the gate, you know, um, Nico coming off injuries last year, Nick Madrigal coming off injuries that he's just trying to juggle, juggle the middle infield. And that's like, you know, juggle the middle infield, you know, make sure these guys aren't playing four games in a row. Obviously today it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter anymore because the rain get the, the game got rained out, but he didn't want guy, uh, the, those the middle infielders playing four games in a row. He thought it was important to get Jonathan VR in the lineup early. Um, and so I think maybe that was just the day. Cause I, I think he told, Nico yesterday, like the, the plan already yesterday was to have Nico sit today. Um, okay. And so I think, I don't think maybe the Homer kind of made Ross second guess it, but he like knew like this is the day that he had penciled in for Nico to sit and get VR in at shortstop, um, which means that if that would have happened today, then maybe tomorrow Madrigal would have sat and you would have had VR at short, Nico at second or some combination of that. Um, so just the way Ross explained it is, is just, 
his plan, his early, especially early in the season, considering it's 162, it's a marathon, not a sprint. He, his early plan was to just shuffle in those middle infielders and yeah, Nico homered and you wanted to see what he could do again today, but um, he didn't want to deviate from his plan as much as like his gut instinct was to put Nico back out there. Yeah. I mean, that's really the only thing I feel like you can nitpick and complain about. Um, but I don't mind that VR is in the lineup. I, people are, what bothers me is that, <laughs> is that Patrick wisdom is in the lineup or Jason Hayward, but I would lean more so or more so towards wisdom even though he's good defensively but righty on righty he struck out twice yesterday i'm not saying that you know he hasn't you know adjusted or made any improvements yet it's only been one game but vr is a switch hitter would have liked to have him in that lineup well, anyway. i want to say that's that's just like not the the way ross is doing it. i think and i can i can answer that as the way ross wants he's like I want Jonathan VR to play shortstop today so I can give these middle infielders days off, right? So That's like Nico's not and, playing and, today. And, I, not and playing I'm not even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I didn't yeah. really have much to complain about. If but if yeah. I were to nitpick at it, at, at sh- solely as the fan here, it yeah. is that I would have liked to see Nico in there in VR at third and have wisdom set because mm-hmm. I just don't like his matchup against Woodruff personally. Yeah, but, and I mean I know. get the nitpicking. I totally get the nitpicking. It's just that. And I think it's like I think in later on in the season when guys are built up and feeling good and whatever, you'll probably see that more playing the matchups and stuff like that. But it was just yeah. again, the, he's not shuffling around the third base when he's shuffling the middle infield. So <clears throat> honestly, if you would have had the four game series, you get VR in today and Nick, to, you know, VR and Nick today in the middle infield. Maybe you get VR and Nico on Saturday if that's the third game, and then maybe you see VR move over to third and Wisdom gets the. Th- so I think it's just like. Again, it's early. It's the early season. He's trying to make sure these guys get get going. So I get the nitpicking yeah. too. I think that's kind of like a common thing. It was like, why is VR not playing third base instead of Wisdom going up against Brandon Woodruff, who kind of lives with the high fastball? Um, I think he's just just playing more of like making sure these guys start off on the right foot versus thinking about that's matchups. Fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I, and I'm I mentioned the Hayward thing. I just I like Ortega. He had good at bats yesterday. <laughs> Would have been you know nice to see him out there in center today instead of Hayward. But I mean, I get it. I understand. I'm not going to sit here and cry at the clouds about it every single episode, guys. <laughs> well, it's, you know it's, this I, isn't Cubs Twitter. It's not Cubs Twitter, so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and obviously, I think the Nico thing. People just want to see him get another chance, and I and you know David yeah. Ross even brought it up. So I will say this, and it's something I want to remember all season long. Part of being a this is part of being a fan, putting yourself in the shoes of the manager or the player and always thinking that we know (laughs) more than they know, you know, that's, that's, that's the fun of being a fan where in reality, the real story is that there's almost zero chance. In fact, there is zero chance. Any of us, no matter how dumb you might think the manager is on some day or a player is on some day, there's no chance we, any of us, know that's that's media, fans, anybody, know more than the manager or the players. They put their entire lives into baseball. And so, while, listen, I've second-guessed as many times as anybody else. They know more about what the player's feeling. They know more about what's going on with the player at home. They know what's going on with the player um, and their head, their head, you know. They know what's going on with the mm-hmm. player – uh, all of all of it, and so, and they know more about the game. They just do. Like it's okay. Yeah. That doesn't mean we can't have we can't have these feelings and have these conversations. Yeah. I'm just saying, when you question the manager in the lineup, and people go on the go out and say this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen, just stop and think. <laughs> you think you really know more than David Ross does about no, his I team no. in that lineup, and nobody really yeah. does. But it, no, and it's that's okay what, to have. It's still okay to have those conversations. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I I totally understand the nitpicking, and and yeah. people are gonna hate. People are gonna hate the lineup, even if it is the perfect lineup. Like there's they're Every gonna day. find something about what. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna find something they don't like about the lineup. So <laughs> like I, but I get the nitpicking. I get wanting to see guys at different places give guys everyday playing time. But yeah, like yeah. you said, it's it, David Ross knows the team. David Ross is the manager. Like I think he knows what he's doing and what he wants yeah. to do. And yeah, after all, of, Hayward, Hayward's uh, oh, go ahead, Luke. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, Joey just jumped on, yes, except Madden leaving Chapman in in game six. And I had like, <laughs> we first never of forget, all, man. also to think that a manager is never going to make a mistake just because they know more than us is also 
why we have these conversations. Like a manager can make a mistake, especially in the heat of the moment. They're juggling 25 things in the dugout all happening without, you know, monitors and Twitter going on next to them, computers. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on. I'm not saying managers are perfect. I'm just saying if you think you know more than the manager about his team, you're 100% wrong. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't be yeah. right and he can be wrong one day. I'm just saying we don't know more than the managers, no matter how bad you might yeah. think a particular manager has been in Cubs history. It's just not the case. Yeah. Um, Joe Vols 14 says Hayward's batting 500, guys. Lay off him. So I'm sorry. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that he put, he put that ball, he put that ball at second base. Right where it needed to be uh, yesterday. <laughs> it counted, it right counted it as a be. hit. It counted That's as right. a hit. Score End of the season, you won't remember it. <laughs> You don't, no, it was you don't just have a hit. to watch the replay. You don't have to watch the replay. <laughs> no. You just look at the box score. You got a hit. <laughs> you know, one of those things even themselves out too because he'll get one taken away from him this season where he gets totally robbed that he should have a hit. So it's like, ah, mm. whatever. He's batting 500. <laughs> uh, vintage, by the way, vintage Kyle Hendricks in the opener. He was the real professor. Uh, Jared wrote it about it at allchgo.com. Ryan's got a great article as well, allchgo.com, and those are open. They're not behind the paywall, right, Ryan? Those those two opening day articles right now are yes, up, so yes, everybody yes. can read them at this point. Yeah, there's two. There's two. Mine and Jared's both open. Uh, we got a notebook up there too. That's behind the paywall, I believe. But so you got if you want to read our notebook, you got to subscribe. Uh, it's so a good idea to do Hendrix? that. I, yeah, for sure it is. And uh, what did you guys think of Hendrix? I mean, I thought it was just such a great sign considering. Uh, the season he was coming off of and all the question marks of the off season, it, you know, it was his worst season in baseball with an ERA over four for the first time. And he went out there and what did, what did Ross was saying? Uh, he basically said it was vintage yep. Kyle Hendricks, right, Ryan? Yeah. I mean, he was saying it was vintage Kyle Hendricks. Again, he was saying that, you know, that the, the, the spin on the curveball was as good as it's ever been. The movement on the changeup as good as it's ever been. Like it's, and you can again, we talked about it yesterday, but you saw it out there. You saw that Kyle was going out there. I think it was 13 whiffs on the changeup alone, which is, mm -hmm. I mean, I could do the search. Um, on I could do the, the baseball savant search real quick and figure that out, but that's like the most he's had in a couple of years on, on his changeup and more than he had in one game and like than all of last season. There's a bunch of different stuff, but you could see that he had things working with him. He had six, six swing, I think all seven or six or seven were, yeah. were, were swinging strikeouts. Six of them on the changeup, another one on the on a high sinker to Adamus, I think. But I mean, you could see he had the full repertoire going. He did have a couple of little bumpy spots, and you would have liked to see him get through that sixth. But yes, yeah, this vintage Kyle Hendricks, a guy that's going out there giving up, you know, not a ton of hard contact. Maybe a couple things drop uh, in the outfield, but not a, not a lot of hard contact. Um, he's gonna he's gonna he's got good control, so he's gonna make guys miss. Whether it's like he's not gonna blow it past them, but if he can get that 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 movement and that control guys will miss yeah i think you you put it perfectly ryan um you know when we were watching yesterday i, I think there was a few times he got that first pitch curveball over a few times and uh i felt like we didn't see a lot of that last year i know he's been trying to implicate that curveball over the last couple of years and i felt like maybe yesterday was the best we've really seen it from him um so correct me if i'm wrong on that but i that's just how i felt just as a you know watching it that at, in that game but mm -hmm. um yeah no he's it's a it's a sign of good things to come everyone says he always sucks in april you know i like i said yesterday i apologize for putting him on my trending down uh <laughs> list or whatever you want to call it like he he let me breathe just a little bit because yeah in spring training he really he, did, he was working on things clearly and but wasn't you know putting up good numbers and i would not that i needed it but i just wanted to feel comfortable about him and uh, you know, yesterday was a good start. And, you know, you, now you just hope that you can get that more often than not the rest of the season. Uh, you know, last year, despite it being his worst year of his career, he was still really good for most of the season in terms of, you know, from, you know, June to August, May to August, something like that. So you're hoping that he just doesn't have any of these down months like he did last year. And, you know, if he if he is solid, what you would expect for someone like him, then again, it's kind of like what I said about Suzuki as a, as an X factor. Like if, if Kyle Hendricks gives you, you know, 2018 to 2020 Kyle Hendricks type, type uh, pitching, then 
the Cubs are going to win more games than we expect. I feel like that over 75 and a half might be a lock if, if Kyle Hendricks gives you 30 really good starts. So, uh, you know, it's, it's like I said, a sign of good things to come. I don't know what yeah, points um, that has him at for Cy Young, but it's probably, pre, you know, you probably make a lot of money if he won the Cy Young. That's that's just a guess. I, and I wouldn't go that far. I'm just saying I think it's a good sign for the Cubs this season that his first game was vintage Kyle Hendricks. Maybe he was tipping pitches last year. We don't know, but it, it's it's a good sign for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Um are we train or are we? Is yeah, that, that your was, transition. That was, the, that, that was the <laughs> hey transition into points bet. That was the point. He mentions points bet. I, th- I think yeah, every time yeah. Luke yeah. mentions, points it's bet. weird because yeah. we're not I in drop, studio. I don't know what the odds are. Yeah, when, when I say yeah. I don't know what the odds are, Cody. But <laughs> well, I don't either. Maybe. But you, you can find out on points bet. I, today I was going to take uh, Brandon Woodruff under five and a half strikeouts. Just keep rolling with that because I felt really good about Burns yesterday and that hit. Um, today on points bet it was. At the the line was at five and a half. You could have bet it and rode with me if this game would have played out. Uh, so maybe tomorrow I'll, I'll ride with it again. But the best way to support CHGO is to download the Points Bet app and use code CHGO when you sign up. If you do that right now, you get two risk free bets up to two thousand dollars. But that's not it. If you make a fifty dollar or more first time deposit, you receive a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of our web content. You'll even get a free shirt of your choice from the CHGO locker. So that's $2,000 in free bets, a free CHGO membership, and a free T-shirt from the CHGO Locker, all for making more than a $50 first-time deposit at PointsBet. If you have any questions, you can email PointsBet at allchgo.com, and we'll help you out. You're home for live in-play betting. Just got even better. Introducing PointsBet's new feature, Live NBA Same Game Parlay. For the first time ever, you can build a perfect live NBA Same Game Parlay only with PointsBet. Combine your favorite bets anytime during the game. What more? You can also boost your live same game parlays. Watch live, parlay live, and boost live with points bet. Uh, the Bulls and the Hornets play tonight. I'm kind of thinking about making a same game parlay about that one. So it, we'll see. Um, and now online sign up is available in Illinois. You can download the points bet app right now and register your account from start to finish all from your phone. I say it every show. If Luke can do it, everyone can do it. So what are you waiting for? Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your bet life with points bet. Give me a problem, call 1-800-522-4700. Cody mentioned uh, the Bulls while talking about points bet, and I feel like we need to set up our CHGO Bulls team for a little therapy session potentially before <laughs> this is all over because they are spiraling down quickly right now. And uh, Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> it, it hasn't been fun for them, I'll say that. But we do have at CHGO live shows and podcasts and post-game shows. Every team in town um, – you know, we're doing premium written content. Ryan, Jerry, Brendan, uh, everybody's trying to get in on the the premium written content for you. If you're at do the membership thing at allchgo.com, you get dope merch for all the teams. You get a free shirt when you sign up at the membership. And I've heard there's even some new designs already potentially starting to come out. So the, the, the dope merch is being shipped out and it's arriving. I've started to see some of it out there on social media and now there might be even another wave of new stuff coming after that. And don't forget the members only discord, the CHGO lounge. I did think about coming down in a like velvety robe for this show, just to kind of give you guys the feel of what I'm thinking for the CHGO discord and members lounge. Maybe next time from home, when we do it from home, I'm going to come down in a big fluffy, you know, Grandpa Stucky robe and some uh, some slippers. You'll be your so you own uh, Hugh Hefner. I'm That's gonna hold right. you to that. <laughs> I, I just said, baby. <laughs> let's let's take a look at some of our. We made a bunch of preseason predictions, and yesterday we talked about who we thought would be winning the World Series, who would be the playoff teams in the National League. We also made some predictions for the awards that we're talking about, and we all went on there. I think National League MVP was one of the first ones we did. And for National League MVP, uh, let's see. I have Bryce Harper, Ryan has Soto, and Cody has Trey Turner. I think all three of those are really good options. Is there somebody that we're leaving out that's obvious in that conversation for National League MVP other than maybe, obviously, Ian Happ at this point? (laughs) Uh, Well... When you look at there's the Dodgers, like there's a yeah. lot of good Acuna, players on the Dodgers. Freddie like, Freeman. 
Yeah, like yeah. for some reason, no one's talking about Mookie Betts going into the season because yeah. he's yeah. coming off a Top down five season. Player baseball, yeah, right, right. So I, you just look at the Dodgers lot roster, and you can pick someone. I chose Trey Turner. I think he fit just because he finished the top five last year. He's taken over for you know Corey Seager basically. There at short, he's going to play every day. He had an insane season last year. Like I just see him. He's a, he's a stud. He's he's someone that I wish somehow, some way, the Cubs would have found a way to get. Um, you know, but yeah, I don't know. There's there's a lot of good players Corey out had, there. Um, Corey had Ronald Acuna. Yeah, I said Acuna just like three yeah. seconds ago. You guys didn't oh, hear me. I'm oh, sorry. Vinny, Vinny. Uh, we did an all city one between me, Vinny, our DNVR Rockies guy, and our 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 PHNX D backs person. Um. Vinny picked Mookie Betts. So if you want to talk, no one's talking about Mickey Mookie Betts. Vinny is your guy because he he believes in him. I mean, I think Acuna, um, you know, I think maybe he got forgotten because he like he got hurt and the Braves still won the World Series. Like maybe we're just like underestimating him or underrating him. Yeah. But he's still hurt. He's still not back, right? No, he's back. No, he's, he's just back. he's not playing defense, right? He's DHing to start. I, so. I don't I don't yeah. I don't remember what uh yeah, exactly. But he, I mean, he will be back. I mean, he's not going to be out the yeah. entire year. But, um, but yeah. him, I mean, Tatis, eventually he's going to come back. And I mean, it's like three months though. Like, he yeah, but we, but year, you know, those uh, Jake Arietta won the Cy Young off of three off the last three months of the season in twenty. Yeah, but he, he's, yeah, but he was an all star snub. Oh, but it was, I mean, it was, he had the best, one of the best stretches I've ever seen as a pitcher. Right. But he won it based off those three months. I and mean, if Fernando Tatis goes out comes back mid season and, and puts up unreal numbers from from mid season uh uh mid season start you don't think he's going to be in that conversation he might be in the conversation yeah, he, he, might, he the could conversation. be in the conversation yeah. if if he came back in yeah july and still hit 50 home runs yeah. oh if he had 50 home runs <laughs> yeah. in july he should, he, he might be in the, the conversation MVP. then he should um, be the MVP. it's kind of yeah. like it's tough though because like you chose soto but i think the nationals yeah. are going to be at the bottom of the nl east and i just like i know harper won it last year and the phillies didn't make the playoffs but they were at least in the race all season i i, I think the nationals are going to be one of the worst teams in the in the national league I, so that's like as far as your pick that's the only reason that i don't like him to win it because they usually just choose someone that's on a good team so hey Andre yeah. Andre Dawson did it for a last place Cubs team, man. Juan Soto that's, can do it. I, I want to do yeah, Juan Soto. It's been a long 20, time since it happened. Twenty three years old, like he's he's a stud. It, yeah. If anyone can go out and and play for a last place team and still win the MVP, I would put my money on on Juan Soto. And by the way, you know we look at what happened to the Cubs World Series championship team. Look what happened to the Nationals World Series championship mm-hmm. team. Like exactly. Soto's yeah. the only guy left. So yeah. it's yeah. it's not uh, just specific to. What happened to the Cubs? All right, let's look at National League Cy Young. And we had a pretty good mix there, too, I think. Um, Bueller, Bueller, Wheeler. Bueller, Bueller. <laughs> yeah, Bueller, <laughs> Bueller. You guys have seen the movie, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, oh, just God. make it's it. Chicago. I mean, We're, it's a Chicago, Chicago movie, but and you guys are younger, but I, I assumed because it's a Chicago movie, you guys have seen it. Oh, yeah. Classic. Yeah. Ferris Bueller. Oh, no, it was Ferris Bueller's Day. I watched it the other day. I think I was uh, when I was down in Mesa. I was like getting ready to go over to over to Sloan Park and Ferris Bueller's Day Off was on TV and I sat down and watched it and was almost late to work. The principal <laughs> really makes that movie. The principal is so good at being, you know, just the angry yeah. teacher that thinks he's going to finally catch him. Yeah. Um, what did you I think, think we all did we all Bueller's change go? those because didn't we change all those did. because DeGrom got hurt? I had DeGrom, oh, DeGrom. and then I was like, yeah. "Oh, okay, well not DeGrom." Yeah. Um, <laughs> I changed so many picks court. because of DeGrom getting hurt yeah. like i had the mets to win the east i had the ground though right it was a uh, sorry Corey and brendan yeah. both had scherzer so that's okay. somebody we didn't pick yeah. but that's that's a name obviously you would think there it's and, not a bad pick yeah <laughs> no and brendan had corbin burns but after we what we've seen that the cubs just carved him up i wouldn't put him down no I'm kidding. it's hard he's, to win back to back right? <laughs> yeah it, that is true i mean i'm i'm telling you i mean corbin burns and woodruff i think are both going to be in that conversation again this year just because yeah. they're both great great pitchers i again i said i said it the other day but i think freddie peralta might be a dark horse i think he's a really good pitcher he's got really good stuff i mean he, he probably f- fades fades to the back a little bit because of burns and woodruff but mm-hmm. he, he he has some solid stuff i think he could i mean he has he has to have a good year as i say he's a dark horse yeah. but i mean he could be in that conversation at the end of the year that's a cool matchup weird. with stroman yeah that's what I, said. I mean yeah on Sunday yeah. it's gonna be him and stroman i think 
going into it, I'm like, that might be one that the Cubs can take if Stroman can outduel Freddie Peralta because it seems like it's going to be a good uh, a good battle. Obviously, the Cubs already took one, uh, so yeah. they could they could split. They could split right there for sure. I mean, that that should be a good matchup. I took Wheeler just one to be different, and two because I mean he had a really good season for Phillies last year. I mean, uh, you know, they're they they have you you would think that they are now with Degrom out Degrom out like you would think it's either them or the Braves as favorites to win that division right like because yeah. you just don't we don't know how long Degrom's gonna be out and like I still don't trust that offense I don't care if they did go get Starling Marte and they've added a few other guys like I I just don't I've never trusted the Mets I don't think anyone can trust the Mets like I I but what what philly did i know like defense is a big issue over there but like they're gonna hit so many homers and then you got nola and wheeler like I, and i think wheeler is the, yeah. the top eight, like the top guy for that team like i i think that he's kind of primed to have like an insane season um yeah. let's take a look at yeah. national league rookie of the year and this one was was interesting because cody went with um hunter green right <laughs> Yeah, Hunter Green. And everybody else, even the guys you don't see on here, everybody else went to say a Suzuki, straight homer <laughs> style. Yeah. Uh, anybody yeah. covering the Cubs for CHGO on the CHGO Cubs team, we all went to say a Suzuki. And by the way, uh, his first game makes me feel a lot better about that pick. I know it's just one Should. game and it's opening day, but his patience was so impressive. And the way he was able to just kind of lower – you know, all the stuff going on around him and have a, a really solid opening day. I think uh, is a, another great sign for the Cubs moving forward this season. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and he was saying that like that, that Corbin Burns cutter is like something he'd never seen before. Like it, it, that's, that's just like right there. An yeah. example of the adjustment to major league pitching, but he, again, he took two walks. Uh, I think he had to work back into a full count for that first one. Um, that second pitch is kind of reached over pop, pop the single out, or yeah, single out to left field. I mean, he, he looked good at the plate, and as as far as plate discipline goes, I think that you, know, you, you can see that. You plus five thousand for an NL MVP. I like it. I'll I'll stick with um, NL NL Rookie of the Year. <laughs> uh, you know, I took Green just because he was a top pick in the draft for the Reds a few years ago, and like, I don't know, like, you know, the pitchers and winning Rookie of the Year. I feel like it happens every once in a while, so. I, uh, you know, he made, he made the opening day roster. He's going to start this weekend. Like, we'll see. Uh, I mean, I hope he doesn't pitch well against the Cubs, but, you know, I, I think he's going to be a stud. I really do. Let's do um, manager of the year real quick. Um, this this never excites me because I just think it's an award that I, I – you don't know what a manager really means to a team. I'm not saying they don't have value. I just – do you really get excited that your manager was manager of the year? I don't know what fan is like, oh, I hope David Ross gets manager of the year this year. Hey, Luke, you were uh, you were just hyping up you were just hyping up David Ross knowing a lot more than we do, and now you're trying to tear him back down. I'm I'm not saying that's not true. Um, <laughs> if the Cubs mess around and make the playoffs, I think David Ross is worthy of a manager of the year award. My manager of the year award <laughs> pick is not David Ross, uh, although I would like to see it. Uh, I'm going with another Cub tie-in, and that is Joe Girardi with the Phillies because I think the Phillies are going to be a team that's much better than maybe some people think in the around the country. I, geez, they're going to hit like crazy, and all they have to do is get in the postseason. They'd be real scary. That's a scary lineup to face, and and Joe Girardi will get a lot of credit for that. And you know, a guy that was talked about as potential Cubs manager, literally for like a decade Never. now. Never. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, I, I mean, I, for I literally ever. I went Roberts. I just think the Dodgers are going to run away with the West. Um, I mean, and, and actually on the uh, like that all city one that I was talking about, they had us like make our boldest NL prediction, right? And one of the ones I said is the West are going to get three playoff teams, but the Dodgers are still going to have the largest margin of like record win, winning the division yeah. record wise. Because I think the Dodgers are just going to run away with that division. Um, and so, I mean, if, if, if they win 110 games, how, how can you not give Dave Roberts the manager of the year award? I, I, yeah, I, I think it comes down because to one of those things where, where yeah, well, like it comes down to like, like you know how many times people say like Michael Jordan could have won more MVPs. Like yeah, it's yeah, kind of yeah. like one of those things. Like he's he's, he's won it already. Like the Dodgers, yeah. like if it, they're expected to win the division, like there's no like. That's why I said like 
maybe if, if if the Cubs mess around and make the playoffs, then David Ross might win the, the manager of the year. And I took Mar for the Cardinals just because, like, he's the youngest manager in baseball, and now he's got this team that they just fired their manager. Like, if the Cardinals win the division, make the playoffs, and make a run, like, he could he could win it. I, I don't know. And, and also, it was kind of like a reverse jinx thing. I saw the way that was put together, and the next category is comeback player of the year. And I'm like, oh, he's going with Carlos Marmol there uh, as, as his comeback player. <laughs> Oliver <laughs> Marmol, I think his yeah, name is. I, yeah. I, I flipped it. My comeback player is uh, clearly Sammy Sosa. Bring him back to Wrigley Field. Come on back, oh, yeah. Sammy. So that's my comeback player of the year pick. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I was going to put Kim Kardashian. Um, <laughs> if you guys have seen Parks and Rec, you might know what I'm talking about. But I ended up going with Kyle Hendricks um based on just he he had a, the rough you know arguably the worst season of his career probably the worst season of his career last year and so uh when he looked how he looked la- uh yesterday if he can keep doing that every game i mean i think he has a great year i think he can have a great year and if he does that i mean why not why not call him the comeback player of the year yeah i Cody madrigal taking madrigal you know you know, if you follow us on social media, I had that little rant about all the people who are already down on Magical before one game. And he, he had an okay day yesterday. He walked yesterday. No one said that that guy walks and he walked yesterday. Um, you know, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, I think he is a very valuable piece on this Cubs roster. I really, truly do. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping, you know, if Magical can come out there and give the Cubs a you know, a 305 batting average and has an on base of, I don't know, 345, 350, and manages to slug, you know, just over 400. Like, that's a solid year for someone like that. And I genuinely feel like he could do that. Uh, he did that with the White Sox last year before he got hurt. So uh, it's just the question is, can he make it a full season? So we're going to wa- We're going to see. Uh, Kevin I saw- Quinn. Kevin Quinn comments asking asking me if is is that is that a lock about to load up points, but I don't know which one he was talking about. But I think he's talking about that Suzuki plus five thousand to win MVP. Uh, oh no, do not do not. It's not a lock. That is not a lock. I also saw that Phil was like, "Hey, rookie of the year, Brennan Davis," and I, I we didn't go that way. At least I personally didn't put him down just because of Ryan's advice to us that he doesn't think he's going to come up for you know a little mm-hmm. while yet, and so maybe he won't have a time enough time and i was like well suzuki's already up and so that's why listen i still think brennan davis would be a great player but that's why i didn't personally choose um brennan davis hey uh want to start your day with a competitive edge strava cbd coffee is a game changer it has helped thousands of people to improve their overall wellness and quality of life strava delivers delicious fresh roasted specialty coffee infused with organic broad spectrum cbd cbd from hemp doesn't make you high or hungry, but it does offer real benefits that can help you. You feel focused, alert, and without the jitters, live your day more balanced and less anxiety, fewer aches and pains, plus including CBD in your daily routine. can even help you enjoy a more restful sleep so you wake up feeling your best. And the best part, Strava is all about quality. Everything is small batch, fresh and shipped straight to your door. Strava also offers concentrated full spectrum CBD tinctures for those looking for a more traditional CBD format with a powerful entourage of benefits. CHGO listeners can save 25% off their entire purchase when you use the code CHGO25. That's 25% off your entire code at StravaCraftCoffee.com when you use the code CHGO25 at checkout. Discount coupon valid on non-subscription purchases only. One use per customer. Already love Strava. Subscribe and save with Strava Coffee Club. Strava, you're in control. Save on your favorite coffees and have them automatically delivered to your home or office on your preferred schedule. Um, real quickly. Can we, we to, oh, go ahead. Can, yeah. can, can we just mention, uh, Joey put in the comments, but Lucas Giolito left his start today against the tigers Ooh. uh so that's another wow. loss for them uh my my minnesota twins pick to win the divisions looking very good by the day boy that that would uh, be abs if they don't have lynn and giolito to start yeah. the season early on because of injuries and i think a lot of people i've heard picking giolito as you know possible cy young winner this year he's put on some weight and uh muscle 
And I guess he's looking really, really good going into this season. So that would be uh, bad, bad news, certainly yeah, for the White Sox. You, you um, feel for our friends Herb and, and Sean. I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't want right the now. I I don't want the White Sox to be better than the Cubs, but I also don't want uh, their entire <laughs> roster to get hurt. Like that's no fun. Like no, because we're baseball fans be... too. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I want to <laughs> yeah, see the I... best players out there and see what happens. Um, right. We got some options here for the last couple minutes. We can talk about. We can talk about Aaron Judge potentially being a free agent, which is the report on on Fox today. And I've seen a lot of people yep. talk with yeah, little yumpers asking Lil. should should they, they go after? It's it's Lil. Lil, Lil, Lil yumper. Lil, Lil yumper Lil. wants to know <laughs> Lil. if would you pay Correa or Judge in the off season this year, assuming that Correa opts out. And you know the report we had just the other day talking about how. The Cubs had this deal ready to offer him for seven years, 30 million average or more, but because of agent stuff, it maybe didn't make its way to Correa. So would he opt out and then be available for that same type offer next off season? Who would you, who would you rather pay Correa or judge? If you, if you were had to pay one of those two guys in the off season, I mean, that's not a terrible problem to have. No. What was, what was the one, the reported offer that judge turned down was like seven years, 200 and, 13 or 30 million yeah like that. yeah and that the, would be less then, than correa right if, if we're yeah. talking about that cubs offer for correa that, that's like that included 10? like the that included like the 17 million with our arbitration. For arbitration this year which mm-hmm. actually means it comes out to like 230 or something like that but still yeah. significantly less than correa uh 30, you know on a long-term deal probably. how old is is aaron judge he's that's 29 29, he's 29 so just so a, few, a that's a lot older. for a guy that you're going to be getting just in his 30s yeah he's a couple right? years so older. next year he's 30 you're getting well, him 30 through 37. Yeah, and there's th- that's the things you have to consider is like, well, Aaron Judge, we talked about it earlier, actually, Luke. It's like, you know, Suzuki is in the right field now. And, right, and yeah. Aaron Judge is a right fielder. But now the, now there's a DH that the Cubs have. I don't know if they could always put Aaron Judge. So, I mean, I think off the top of my head, I, I – It's not a bad saying. outfielder either. Yeah. I don't even know. No, I'm, the more complete player is Correa. The yeah. more explosive bat is obviously Judge. So if you're just looking yeah. for a straight power DH that you're not going to be going to these flexible lineups all the yeah. time, and you you think Brennan Davis is going to be your center fielder and Suzuki is going to be your right fielder and and player C is going to be your left fielder, Frazier, Hap, or someone in the farm system. Um, and that said, you could put Suzuki in left. And judge in right, and then, you had to play then, every once in a while. And then, but then you're getting rid of um, NL MVP favorite Ian Hat. That's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I still personally would lean Correa in that mix. If I if I had yeah. to choose between the two, I think I'd go Correa. I think I would too, just because you got you also have to factor in the farm system. I mean, the Cubs right. have a ton of guys on the farm, both in the outfield and uh you know on the infield too that have potential i know owen casey looked pretty good in the spring he showed some flashes of being a really good player i know the cubs are high on him that said he's starting the year i think in south bend so he's got a ways to go still Mm -hmm. um and you know you just can't bank on those guys being your future but the reason i would take correa is because event at least with correa it doesn't block any of those other guys eventually you can move correa to third or second whatever um you know i and that said still though like we're still trying to figure out if if nico horner is your future same thing with madrigal so there's a lot of questions it's honestly we should revisit the question at the end of the season just based off like what does horner and and magical show us uh, yeah, it's I, it's hard for me to say <laughs> yeah i mean i i would probably lean correa too i think we i think I, I think we're all like kind of in the middle but also like leaning correa's <laughs> way is what it seems yeah. like yeah. um just yes. for everything that you mentioned but at the same time it's like correa at shortstop gives you know like give, gives ross that freedom that he wants to, uh, that you know you kind of came in with the wanting to be able to move nico around the around the lineup um and not move around move around the field Whereas, I mean, I, I guess we don't know how crowded the outfield will be next year, but if you picked up Judge, that just kind of makes it a lot as a lot more like onto trying to pick, trying to pick out who's going to make up that outfield next year. Um, and then, like you said, Correa could eventually move over to third base. Could eventually, you know, just be a, a mostly of a mostly a DH the more he ages if you want to get him off the field. I, I mean, I'd probably 
I probably lean more towards Correa, but that that's a this is a very hypothetical question that I don't yeah, know. I don't know right. that we'll even be having this. Kind of, I don't know that the. I don't know that. Uh, well, have, yeah, like Cody said, we'll have to. Uh, I'm surprised the we won't have anything. It. Go ahead, I'm Cody. just surprised. I'm just surprised the Yankees aren't just like. Like you never heard of the Yankees having contract like feuds with players. Like they just pay their guys like throughout my entire life. That's what they do. But this that's is why, crazy because you're looking at a guy that you'd be given a seven year deal, and that would be all in his thirties. Yeah, yeah. So it's was, a lot of I money to honest, get someone who'll be thirty next year. I was surprised to see the arbitration numbers. Not that they were four million dollars apart, but that Aaron Judge can make seventeen million dollars in arbitration. That's that, that is nuts. Like, who makes that kind of money through arbitration? I mean, even <laughs> I, Contre- I don't know. Contreras was not. Didn't Bryant Contreras make something nine. close to that? I thought I thought Bryant made close to that in one of his last two seasons. I just know uh, that Go Vols fourteen says just save up for Shohei instead. I like that too. I like <laughs> that too. I mean, he's hey. if he if he plays like he did last year and how he pitched last night and played. Oh, in general, for the next what is it? He's a free agent in twenty twenty three or twenty twenty four. One of those two years, like prime window he, for the Cubs. He is going to make so much money, man. He will surpass the Mike Trout contract just because he can do both. Like but now, you have Suzuki oh, yeah. to recruit him. Yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. Huh? Yeah, friends. Joey would he yeah, would be. Oh, By the way, God. Darvish he, looked good in his opener too. Just bring them all back. <laughs> We just have all of Japan media yeah, well, at Wrigley Field. They can now Suzuki can recruit both of them, and they can you know Darvish would be happy to come back. He loved his time in Chicago. You know, you bring in Shohei, and you go yeah. complete international team. And they, listen, the Cubs would be powerhouses if they got one of those guys back with with the way the farm system looks. Um, Joey says to what bring, does Joey say? Yeah, to bring give Juan Soto whatever he wants to bring him bring ownership Chicago. stake in the team. Uh, Did he he... sign a contract extension like like a giant one like within the last year or two? Like he's in year one or two of that extension. I, I don't right? know. I, on on Spo Track at least it has his unrestricted free agency starting in twenty twenty five. Oh okay. Um, I do remember hearing something about a Juan Soto extension, but I don't. Know. But if it's twenty twenty five and he's twenty twenty three now, that's he'll be like twenty six, something like that. Uh, that's gonna be a he's gonna make a ton price. of money. Oh <laughs> yeah, about, yeah, hefty price. What yeah. about if you gave Soto or Shohei uh, the hotel across from Wrigley <laughs> instead of a contract? Be oh. like, here, you know what? You have it <laughs> for retirement. Here's the hotel, and uh, you'll have that making money for you forever instead of a contract. That's got to be legal. Making money think. for you, yeah. like you're just making tell me. <laughs> By the way, uh, it, uh, Soto declined a 13-year, $350 million contract before the lockout, according, oh, according to reports. According Joey to now reports. saying just give them marquee <laughs> instead of the hotel. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That'd be, yeah. I think that's a good place. I think that's a good place to stop. <laughs> huh? Do we want to talk about Rizzo? What? We should talk about Rizzo. We have yeah, let's, minutes, all right. right. Let's, do it. Um, let's do it just for a couple minutes. What do you say? Um, so Rizzo – I don't who was the who was the interview with? He was asked about I just remember Bob Nightingale Flame tweeting deal, right? it. Yes, and he and he went into a an answer saying that basically look at Freddie Freeman and the Braves. They just let Freddie Freeman go. There is no loyalty in baseball anymore. It had to do with contract talks for people. Um yeah. and I, I guess people took the legs on that and just ran with it, you know, because anything Rizzo spikes people, but um, (laughs) he's not wrong about it, but he's also not, it's also not just baseball. Like it's a lot of the business. He's very, he's very one-sided on it. He's he's very one-sided on that, on that like statement in my opinion. And it's also like, if you see it, you see, I think you see it from where Rizzo is coming from as far as like, the Cubs could have paid whatever they wanted to keep those guys around, but they didn't. Yeah. And maybe Rizzo sees like that as not, not loyalty, but at the same time, it's like players can take, you know, players can, can be loyal to the team and take discounts, but don't want to. And not that, not saying that they should or shouldn't, but like, does that also on the flip side show that they're maybe less loyal to their team because they want the money first, which is like, that's just a weird um, dynamic to, to put it in. Like there's I don't know what there's loyalty in baseball just because money money talks, obviously. 
Um, I mean, I, yeah. I'm not, I, again, I see where Rizzo is coming from, but it's also both sides of the coin. It's like, I think there's a, I don't, I don't even know how to say it the right way, but it's like the, I, that loyalty just, part isn't maybe it, com- it comes on both sides. Yeah. I think it's a, a universal theme in everything we do. Like I, I get it. Like he's mad. I, I understand why he's mad. I understand why the Cubs went the other way with it because it's a cold, hard business and that's the way things go. I understand the cold, hard business of the Braves losing a guy, but then replacing him with someone that's got very similar numbers to him, but you've just lost. You can argue is bad is better. <laughs> Yeah, he's but, but he's not the heart and soul of the team that just won the World Series yeah. for you. Um, so, I, listen, I, I get both sides of it. And I also think it does um, drive home the point that I think there is just a little bit of bad blood from Anthony Rizzo over how it all ended here. You know, he, he's still a little hurt by it, and that is totally understandable because I think mm-hmm. a lot of fans probably feel the same way that he does about it, right or wrong well, okay. for that decision. Well, we're still, uh, of course, fans don't, don't, or, you know, people are still talking about Anthony Rizzo around <laughs> Chicago. Like, p- fans still feel some type of way about Anthony yeah. Rizzo. I, I just saw I think today I've said somebody this before. pointing out. Yeah, go, go ahead. I was, I was just going to say, like, what I, it, it's something I said on a previous show. I just feel like we're going to be talking about this, that storyline, him, Brian Baez, whatever, the contract extension talk. We're going to be talking about for like another decade. Like, uh, anytime there's a quote like what he said yesterday yes. or, whoever I, it, we're going to talk about it and people are going to talk about it and we can't really, I don't think we should ignore it. It is a thing that we can just sit here and, you know, Oh, does this make you feel any different about how things were down? And it's like, well, whatever, w- what he said, honestly, just didn't surprise me based off what we know. I feel like definitely was a bad breakup, but definitely, you know, I'm, I think Rizzo really didn't think that he was ever going to be traded. I think he thought that the Cubs were going to give him whatever he wanted and it kind of backfired on him. And, you know, I'm saying this on a day that he hit the first home run for the Yankees today. Uh, he's betting on himself and he thinks he can go make more than what the Cubs are going to offer him at five million or five years, 70 million or whatever it is. And I hope he does. I genuinely hope he does. Yeah, and he too. goes and gets the money he wants. But at the same time, I am a Cubs fan first before a player. I will always be on the player side when it comes to like making money or, you know, you know, CBA type stuff. But Again, I am Cubs fan first, and I'm going to support the team before one particular player at the end of the day. So that's I just me, though. Say I get the, why there's a my not. We could tell Cody's other, loyal. Yeah. yeah I, the <laughs> only other I have about it is that someone brought up to me the other day when talking about all those guys leaving. Well, you know, they let Greg Maddox go right before he hit it big. And I'm like, yeah, but the difference in that is that was a horrible move. They should have thrown everything at Greg Maddox to keep him in town. These guys are have all done it and have had a long chance to prove themselves, and it wasn't working. So now they're trying to mix up the team. Like yeah. the best thing the, you can compare to the Greg Maddox thing is right. The best thing to compare the the Greg Maddox to, if you want to look at any player in the last five years, in my opinion, would be Nick Castellanos. Nick Castellanos was the guy that who, who will continue to make Cubs fans remember that they. That, that we didn't find a way to bring him back. Like he is going yeah. to mash and he's not he a Hall of Famer. Cincinnati. <laughs> Probably not. It depends on what no. he does in the next 10 years, right? But like he's a great baseball player. He's really good. And he was like, you know, when the Cubs got him, his like he, his entire being was re you just I can't think of the word, but just brought to life because he was in Detroit where no one gave two shits what's going on and their team sucked. And like, I don't know, ever since he went to the Cubs, he his his career was brought to like what you know his expectations were and uh yeah no i that's why he got a huge contract from the phillies and now he's gonna go mash there just like he did in cincinnati and you know that like to me that's when you look at it from greg max if you compare it to a greg maddox standpoint i i think that the other three guys were just kind of like yeah there were times where you felt like they weren't progressing their careers and then there's other times you're like why haven't we extended these guys yet and it's like it was a lot of back and forth as a fan, at least watching and seeing how, like how you felt like if you wanted to keep them around and stuff. I, I know that's how I was at least. So yes. um, Cody, I hear everything tough. you're saying, but as the elder statesman, I cannot put Nick Castellanos and Greg Maddox in the same conversation <laughs> or even the same sentence ever. I hope but everyone I, I understands what, what I mean. I do. <laughs> I'm not calling him a hall of famer. I'm, I'm not calling protect, him a hall of famer. To, I'm trying to protect you. I know that's what I'm saying. <laughs> saying Greg Max, you're just saying there's a little similarity between something involving them. 
Okay. A yeah. little before, bit. Before we hop yes, off, go Luke, ahead. Um, I did find that stat, uh, the Hendricks one we we're talking. Speaking of Greg Maddox, the other professor, uh, Kyle Hendricks, uh, that stat, Jordan Bashan tweeted it out. Uh, this is when he had 12 whiffs uh, via his changeup yesterday. That was the most he's had uh, in a game with his changeup since July 9th, 2018. When he had 13, so he ended up with 13. So he managed to, uh, he might have managed to to uh, tie that. So, wow, tied for the most he's had since since uh, 28 mid July 2018. So there's a positive note we can end it on. And another one is that the Cubs are still undefeated in the history of the CHGO Cubs podcast. I've never, never lost, lost the game. True. Never true. lost. Want to know? And hopefully they'll have a good weekend series against the Brewers. Uh, Cody, you have fun out at the ballpark. And I'll be in left field game. bleachers. Yeah, I'll be in left field bleachers tomorrow. If anyone listening is is out there or going to the game, going to be in the bleachers. Feel free to DM me, and uh, you know I'll grab a beer with you or something. Yeah, I'll be in the and press then, box. Uh, I'll you're going to be in the press, be in the press box. box, and Corey and. Brendan will have a Cubs related podcast for you first thing in the morning, I think on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. And then obviously we'll be back uh, Monday to do another podcast. Cubs have the off day, at least that's scheduled. And then they start to head out on the road. Um, It's going to be fun off to a good start. And uh, that's it for this edition of the CHGO Cubs podcast presented by points bet. Thanks for listening. Cubs still undefeated. So fly the W.